Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Love you. Good morning, family. It is a pleasure to be with you today. And I am excited to get into the word of the Lord. Is anyone expecting today? Expecting, expecting. It's good to come into the presence of the Lord expecting. That's not selfish, it's that God is that kind of God. And I've come expecting today. And we've got some big questions. Last week, Pastor Mike kicked off the series, Journey Through Genesis, within the beginning. Isn't it important to know who, not necessarily how? Is that... I don't know how God does some of the things that God does, but I'm thankful that God's doing it. Amen. And so we want to dive into the next part of this journey through Genesis, and we see that God makes these dirt creatures. Let's go uh, to the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 26, and see what the word of the Lord says to us today. Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 26 says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, over all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Everyone say dominion. Yeah, we have a reason for being here. I'm still in the word, but I just want to flow a minute and say, has anyone ever asked the question, why am I here? It's right here. That's a big question. That's an awesome question. We should ask that question. Why humans? Why us? Why God? It's right here. He calls us to be fruitful, to increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea, birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground. We're going to jump to Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7 and just bring this in here. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Have you ever wondered who you are? How important is identity? Who am I? Who am I? Well, I want to present to you the idea from these scriptures today that who we are is defined by whose we are. Come on, Moses was at the burning bush and he said, Lord, who am I to deliver the children of Israel? And the Lord's like, you're asking the wrong question. Could it be that our who am I is the wrong question? It means well and it's understandable to ask it, but God's like, you've you've fallen to such a degree you don't know exactly how to ask the question your heart's trying to ask. It's not who you are, it's whose you are. And when you answer who you are, you'll know who you are. Oh, nudge somebody and say, I know who you belong to. Come on. Nudge somebody and say, I know who you belong to. Now, I know that might seem a little weird if you're a first-time guest, but, but we do know who we belong to today. And, and who I am comes from whose I am. I mean, I can't help but just get a little Holy Spirit spoiler right now and say, we belong to God. And when we realize, come on, you don't have to figure this all out by yourself. You don't have to solve all these problems by yourself. It's, I belong to God. And suddenly a foundation of identity and understanding and purpose begins to fill and flood our life. Do we still have questions? Sure, we have questions. But when we begin to say, Lord, I'm going to start identity and I'm going to start understanding me by understanding whose I am and who I belong to. 
Let's just have a word of prayer. Lord, Father God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to bless the remainder of these moments together in your word. I pray, Lord, that in this moment we have a renewed connection to your spirit. I pray, Lord, in these moments that our eyes are open, quite frankly. God, we're praying for revelation from your word, revelation from your spirit, that we have your words, but we also have the author who uttered them. And God, we're asking you in the name that is above every name, let lives come closer to you and closer to each other in the process. Could we all just say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. All right, God formed from the ground what? Somebody help me. I like to try this interaction stuff. He formed from the ground what? Yeah, man, humans. And, and how did God shape that dirt? His self-portrait. The author is making an image of himself out of earth. My goal today is to help. I know we won't fix every problem, solve every question. That's not the point of today. But maybe we move the dial. Maybe we move it just a little bit more, and you leave here going, I do have purpose. I'm not an accident. I am intended by God. I have something I can do today with God that goes all the way back to the very beginning. All right, getting back to that, he makes his self-portrait in mud. What a humble God. What a vulnerable God. He took dirt, formed it together, shaped the clay, and he's looking and he's like, that looks like me. My image, my likeness. Everyone say, me. That's us. My image, my likeness. So he takes the earth, shapes it like him, then he takes heaven and breathes it into the earth. You are a living microcosm of God's plan to bring heaven to earth. I, I listen, I'm, I'm nerdy about this stuff, and I'm over here like going, Aah! right now about it. Everywhere you go, you are a model of God's plan. Everywhere you go, your earth invaded with heaven. Every, oh, you're like, well, I, I've never been spirit-filled. Listen, just being alive is the echo of that Holy Spirit. And today, before we leave, that can be refreshed, renewed, reclaimed, restored. God's not done filling these earthen vessels. The glory is magnetically, if you please, attracted to earthen vessels. That's what we see here. Heaven is always looking for earth to fill. Come on, somebody, right, right, right now. Just point to yourself and say, I'm what God's looking for. Now look at your neighbor and look at them and say, you're what God's looking for. And listen, just to wear you out with all this church calisthenics, look at somebody else and say, we are what God's looking for. <laughs> we, we, family, church, the Lord, if he's looking anywhere, he's looking right here and going, oh yeah, look at all of these dirt creatures that when we get a better picture of God, that God is not like, man, you need to get right if you want me to come around you. That's how some of the pictures we've been told about God is. And I'm not saying that our behavior or our morality doesn't matter. It's that it isn't the way we've been told. God is looking for a place to rest. What do you see in the early part of this story? It's beyond the scope of today, but I can't help myself but bring it out because it's really good. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth last week. And the earth was perfect and didn't need God. Is that what it says? The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. There was chaos, things weren't in order, things weren't just right, things weren't perfect, things weren't saved. Where'd the spirit go? Well, I, I'm, somebody's gonna need to fix all that before I show up. That isn't what the Spirit did. The Spirit came and was drawn to the chaos. You need to realize today, if there's a little bit of chaos in your life, in your family, in your business, on your job, God's like, mm, opportunity. 
opportunity. Oh, yes. Mm. You need to see God on pins and needles going, oh, I can't wait to put my hands on that chaos. You know, somebody on your row or just behind your row got a little bit of crazy in them. Just a little bit. Listen, it's not, our, it's not our place to judge how much crazy. We just know it's there. God's not afraid of crazy. He's drawn to chaos. He's drawn to things that are not not where they're going to be. Because, friend, hear me. This is the lie of the serpent, that you can do something with that chaos that draws God. And you're in an endless cycle of trying to please and prove and draw God. And God's like, you didn't have to do any of that. I just want your heart. I'm drawn to the crazy. <laughs> now, you know, some of y'all clapping, you're like, mm, now he can't, be, he can't be drawn to Betty's crazy. <laughs> Betty got like real crazy. He's drawn to it. We've got to stop thinking that God is waiting on us to prove something to him before he will love us. This is not this story. You are a living embodiment of God's plan for earth. How many of you believe that you're serving a God who wants to do something on this earth? You're a part of it. Do you know where it's going to start on that earth? In Royce and in you. And I hope there's, I know there's a Betty here, and I'm going I'm to meet her after church, but even crazy Betty. <laughs> Betty, I'm sorry. I know you're not, but it's just an illustration. It's just sermon stuff, you know. It's hard to do what we do up here, you know. You are God's self-portrait made in mud, filled with glory. I'm not stretching the word of God, am I? We're just seeing it in a way. Sometimes the cliche draws the meaning out because we've read it so many times we don't realize its power. We've looked at it so many times we don't realize that Royce Wilson, a transplanted Texan, to build a church in, the, in Seattle, Washington, right? That this is, just doesn't make sense. But like me, me, earth, heaven, yes, you, crazy Betty, <laughs> Betty's going to be like, you're going to need to stop right now. Because <laughs> there's bound to be a Betty, either in this service or next service. And I'll change the names up in the next one <laughs> to protect the innocent. <laughs> we were made for love. I can't, I don't have the gift to say it the way I believe God means it. I'll do the best I can, but you, you, say, yeah, me. Made for love. <laughs> made for love. Made to be loved. Made to love. Now, some of us have given up on love. In this room, you've given up on love. Now, you don't want to tell anybody. Many of you don't because it's not the Christian thing to do. But somewhere in our heart, a switch went, mm-mm. No, no. I'm done. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of feeling this way. And heaven's calling you today and saying, I know it hurts because that's what love does. It hurts. If you're going to risk vulnerability, there's the potential that love could go wrong, that things don't go the way you want them to, that you can be rejected. That's why there's two trees in the garden. That's next week, right? That's, that's to get not too far ahead. But God leaves room. If you don't want to be in relationship, you don't have to. That's vulnerability that God respects you and me that much as image bearers. Image bearers. If you don't want to love me back, you don't have to. But you were made for love. Humans are made in the image of God and the likeness of God. I present to you that because of the imago Dei, that's Latin for image of God, you, every one of you, are the imago Dei. You are the only creature we know of that was given to us in the Word that has the capacity to be known by God in such a relational way and to receive a revelation of God in such a relational way. He made you like him so you could know him and thereby knowing him would know yourself. 
Is there anybody here, and I'll just, this is not a trick question, I have, I'm gonna tell you, I'm raising my hand right now, but is there anybody here that you've wondered, who am I and what am I here for? That's a big human question. You are here for the love of God to both receive it and display it. Have you ever wondered who I am? Who am I? God said, it is impossible for a dirt creature who is the self-portrait of the Almighty to know themselves without staring into the face of God. You can't know you without God's presence. You can't understand you without looking at God. Looking at God, now this could get, I don't want this to be strange theologically, but looking at God is like looking in the mirror. He's the source, you're not, that's it. But we are a being made to understand who we are by seeking God. You're never gonna know you trying to do it by yourself. And you're gonna keep coming up with a false alternative sense of who you are. It's never going to be fulfilling. Come on, is there anybody that remembers that stage in your life? Right, what it was like to try and understand who you are. But when we stare into the face of God and we're enveloped by his presence, suddenly, I'm home. I'm home. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. How many of you know God is love? God is love. You are the self-portrait of a God who does not love. I, I want to stress this. You're like, yes, he does. I get it. It's not simply that God loves. God is love. That's a, there's a deeper sense. God doesn't just love. He is love. The love itself, authentic, true love, not the passions, urges, compulsions, and desires, and pleasure-seeking that we often in this world confuse love as, but love itself as it truly is, is God's very nature, and he made you in his image. So as much as we are burned and hurt by love, we can't escape love. We're hopeless creatures. We're hopelessly romantic. We, we are yearning for love. Now, maybe we cut people off, but you're going to love something, aren't you? And that's idolatry when we love anything in place of God. When you seek anything to tell you who you are apart from the image you were made from is idolatry. And idols kill. Not because of God's wrath and judgment because you're doing something wrong and you're breaking a rule. It's because you're trying to know you, but you're not looking at the one whose portrait you are. You're not looking at the source. You're not seeing your true self. You're made from love and made for love. Why is it so hard for us to believe that God loves us? Notice I said we. And that's not just rhetorical preaching mechanics. Why is it so hard for Royce to believe that God loves me? I never feel more alive than I'm, when I'm engaged in the revelation and understanding that God loves me. But give me just a few days or a few weeks, a few problems pile on, someone has a snide comment, someone talks about me being bald. I'm really over that, you know. It's like I've been bald a long time. I'm like, bring it. But all of us still have those soft spots, right, where if they do say something, you're kind of like, don't bother me. And then you run to a friend. You're like, can you believe what they said? Because it does hurt, right? Why in those moments do we all of a sudden doubt fundamental reality right here at the beginning that we are made for love and we are never not loved? Now, I know that could be on the verge of some really bad double negative grammar. And that's not Texan. That's an actual good statement. We are never not loved. We are never not loved. Any English teachers are like, Royce, you might could have framed that sentence just a little bit better. I don't want to. We are never, never. I feel the Holy Spirit. I don't get anywhere else. I don't care. Somebody, God wants you to know he loves you so much. He arranged everything for you to be here at the 930. 
to tell you, you are never not loved. Ever is there a moment where God doesn't love you? You're like, oh, but you remember that time when I did? No, no, no. The Lord's like, I was drawn to you even more. Your chaos calls me. Your chaos pulls me. Your chaos cries out to me. But the Spirit can't brood and hover and move over a chaos that keeps saying, thanks, I got it. Appreciate it. Peace, Jesus. <laughs> we'll take it from here. How's that been going? The heart of this message today, and I'm just stirred up here in the 930, is the Spirit is saying, oh, let me, let me add that problem. Let me add that hurt. Let me add that chaos. Now, I just heard this echo from the audience. There's a couple, about maybe four or five people. It's like, I've done it. I've done it, Royce. Okay. Here's how I believe you've done it, not to judge, but to just help. You ever had somebody ask you to help, like the, the plumber or come fix this, and then they're over your shoulder, the constant, oh, no, 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 don't, no, I don't know if it works that way. This is how we work with the Holy Spirit. We're like, Lord, come help me. Holy Spirit comes, and we're like, mm, now don't, don't be going in there. Now, now, I don't think that's the pipe. That's not the one that's clogged up. Do it, do it like this, Lord. I know how you're supposed to fix me. I know what's best for me. You ever had, you ever tried to help somebody and they're just constantly micromanaging you, just constantly controlling the situation, and you just be like, look, you want my help or not? Because if you knew so much about it, you would have fixed it already. You see, that's the arrogance and pride that we get absorbed with when we're apart from the Spirit. We're apart from the reminder of who we are and whose we are. And so we pull on these threads with God and we're saying I don't know if that's where you need to try and heal me I don't know if that's how you need to fix me I don't know if that's the way God it's supposed to be would you just close your eyes with me right now we're just going to follow the leading of the spirit heavenly father there is a cry for love in this room there is chaos in this room Chaos not because someone's wrong, but just because we're human and we're messy and chaotic. We're dirt creatures, but we need your breath again. We're not going to tell you how to fix us this morning because we don't know how. But we know, Lord, today by faith what's missing is more of you. Breathe on us. Breathe on us today. Breathe on us with your spirit. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Mm. Savior, we thank you for your love today. We thank you for your calling, your wooing. Is there a surrender in the house today? There's just a little more I want to share with you, but I don't want to move past this moment right now. Is there a cry in the house that would say, Lord, I just need more of you? Would you breathe on me again? Do you know that God, through Christ, is in the breathing on his people again and again and again and again? He's in that kind of ministry. Jesus isn't saying, well, you got one breath. That's all you're getting. No, no, no. He's like, oh, let me remind you. Let me remind you. I hear that as a prophetic utterance over this house, this morning, this service. Let me remind you who you are. And most importantly, whose you are. You're mine. You're my daughter. You're my son. You're my temple, you're my tabernacle, you're my ark of the original covenant. You're the one who my spirit has always wanted to reside on. Be filled, be renewed, be strengthened. I'm just gonna obey the Lord right now and I know that there might be some sensitivity to touch or whatever and we honor that, we honor that. But if you feel the liberty and it's 
comfortable and appropriate, would you just make a connection with someone near you? It could be their hand or their shoulder. Very appropriate. But I believe in body ministry. Now, I believe God wants to fill each and every one of us individually, but I also believe that God wants to fill the house because we together constitute a body as well. And when we make this connection, we're making a supernatural circuit that the power of God wants to flow through. Here's what I'm asking you to ask. Fill us. Don't say fill me. Fill us. And when us is filled, I am filled. Fill us today, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Mm. I hear the Lord saying, let me love you. God loves you when you allow distance, but he can show you and wants to today what love looks like up close. I hear the Lord saying, I want to heal intimacy issues. And that's not just sex, but closeness. Intimacy into me you see. It's a great way to remember what intimacy is all about. Into me you see. Father, I want you to see into me and I want to see into you. I don't want distance because I'm ashamed. I don't want distance because I feel like a failure. I don't want religiosity to try and be the way I fix intimacy. I just want you to love me broken and all. Hold me broken and all. Cling to me, broken and all. Okay, we're in a holy moment, but I want to share this last thing with you. And it might not seem like good sermon flow or any of that, but just want to obey the Holy Spirit because that's what matters most. If we can go to Genesis 1, I want you to see this. And this is where God's going to leave us today. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 20. And then we're going to read verse 24. Genesis 1, 20, and God said, let the water, and I know we're in a holy moment. Could you read this with me? One, two, three, and God said, let the water team with living creatures, pause, water, living creatures, okay? So that's going to be fish, marine life, notice habitat, living being. Habitat, living being. Let's see if this pattern continues. One, two, three. And let birds fly where? Above the earth, across, I love this, vault of the sky, the expanse. That's air, that's atmosphere, right? Another habitat. Let's jump to verse 24. And God said, let the land, is that a habitat? Yeah? Produce living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock, pause. Livestock do well out at sea? Maybe on a boat or a barge, but not in that habitat, right? You got to bring their habitat with them if they're going to survive. How well do fish do on land? They're going to die. You, you go fishing, you take that fish out of the boat for just a second, and they're going crazy because I'm not in my environment. I'm not in my environment. Is that what the world's doing right now because we humans are not in our environment? Just the thrashing. Frantic. Help, 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 help. <laughs> and we call it swag. We call it a hundred thou, you know, <laughs> like it's turned up. It's just thrashing. It's just thrashing. It's just suffocating. It's hurting. It can look really busy. I mean, if you was like, and I mean, this is so weird, but like a fish flopping, if you could create a system to harness that energy, you might could produce like a little electricity or something, right? Because it's just going crazy. And we jump back and we go, oh, 
look, the fish is frantic, going crazy, is, is generating light for our light bulb. How absurd is my illustration, but how close to what might be going on in our world is it? Habitat, habitat, habitat. All right, livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. Genesis 1.26. I want to ask you a question. When God made fish, did he reference water? And when God made birds, did he reference air? And when God made cattle, did he reference earth? So there is a Hebraic pattern in this poem of creation that's being told to us. When living things come into existence, I am connecting them with a life-sustaining habitat where they will find meaning and purpose and live to the fullness of who they are meant to be. Am I off? Is, is this a theologically accurate statement about the Word of God? I think we're on to something. So what is humans' habitat? Then God said, to the habitat, let us. God is the creator. God is the, the source. God is the pattern we're made after and the environment in which we're to live in. Let us. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. He doesn't say water. He doesn't say mountains. He doesn't say the moon. He says me. I want you to stand with me this morning. The Imago Dei, the image of God, is who you are and where you find meaning, purpose, and fulfillment. It's the power. If you've ever been fishing, right, and the fish is on the bank or in the boat, they've got a lot of energy because they're dying. I know that's disturbing, but just how much energy are we giving off because of death and not really tied to life? The moment you put that fish back in the water, if you ever do catch and release, or maybe the fish is not up to what your, uh, the legal requirements or whatever, and you put them back in the water, you give them just a second, and they're just kind of like dazed a minute, right, if you've ever been fishing, and it's like, bam! It's like, like lightning, <laughs> and they're like, I'm home. You have no idea the power of what it means to live until you and I come back to our natural habitat in God. Come back to his presence to make life make sense. Come back to his presence today for life to make sense. Is there anybody in the market for life to make a little more sense? It's in his presence today. So I have a unique prayer. If you're not following Jesus today, if you're not current in your faith, I, I, I feel a prayer that's not just for first-time guests, but first-time guests and maybe third-time guests. If you're not following Jesus, this prayer is for you too. But I'm also reaching out to my brothers and sisters who've been following the Lord for a little while and the way gets weary. The Lord wants to fill us again and refresh us with our habitat and bring us home to God. So while I know being in church a long time myself that sometimes at this moment in the service, it's like, Lord, I'm already following you, bless others. Could it be a prayer where God blesses all of us today? And we say, Lord, I'm not going to take for granted whether or not I'm in your presence. I want to swim and thrive in your environment. And I, I really want to pray, but I also hear the Holy Spirit saying, when you leave here today, anyone ever been scuba diving? You know what it is at least, right? How does that work? If you're going to be in any length of time in an environment that is not your natural habitat, you bring your habitat with you.
put it on your back <laughs> and go, I got to go into work. Don't expect them who's not in that environment to create that. That's our job. That's part of dominion. Bring your environment with you, not to pressure anyone, but to sustain you. Now, if someone else goes, oh my goodness, I forgot, I'm, I don't have gills. <laughs> Could I have some of your environment? And you're like, you absolutely can. Come hang out. See, how does that oxygen feel? It's amazing. I didn't know life could be this good. Like, let's tell others. Let's share our environment. Would you bow your heads with me? Pray with me whether you have been living for God for decades or you're still questioning what it all means. Father, we come before you right now. We lay our hearts before you. We've been questioning, who are we? And Lord, we ask that you forgive us for all the ways we've tried to answer that question that doesn't include you. Forgive us. And today we turn to your environment. We turn to your presence. We turn to your atmosphere. And we breathe in deeply. And we come home by putting our faith and trust in you, Jesus, and we surrender. We will understand who we are now by realizing whose we are. We are yours. Can you pray this? Fill me. Refresh me with your spirit, your presence, your power wonderful name of Jesus. You are Lord. You are King. You're the source. Lead on. I can't wait to see where the road goes from here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, just take in a big, deep breath. Now listen, being spirit-filled, right? There's signs, wonders, gifts of the spirit, tongues, uh, manifestations. There's all kinds of things associated with a fresh manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I'm all for that. But take in another deep breath. We need to get back to just the bedrocks of the air we breathe every day is filled with the glory of God as well. Here's your assignment. Leave this house and take your environment with you. Remind others who they are, whose they are. Remind them that the struggle could be because they're not in their natural habitat. Share some of that environment with them. That is reaching others with Jesus. Could you look at someone right now and just say, I love you, respect you, I see God in you. Can you do that? I love you, respect you, I see God in you. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to Family Church ny.com to take your next steps.